you know, in, in terms of Danielle Reyna, I mean, she's always going to be remembered as someone who sabotaged a lifelong friendship because of how her kid was being treated. And, and, and rather than try to deal with that, uh, you know, with the Burhalters face to face, um, she took this, this, uh, well, it's not an allegation. I mean, it actually happened, but she took this incident uh, to U.S. soccer. And, uh, you know, in the end, they kind of got what they wanted in terms of uh, Greg Berhalter's future with the USSF, at least that's my opinion of it. Uh, but I think they've done a lot of damage to themselves. And I think that's what people are going to remember. So this is what I would like for people to remember is how it can enact change. Um, they're going to revisit policies, revise policies, change policies, U.S. soccer of what's going forward. Because in 2019, I have to remind you, Claudio Reyna interviewed for the GM role on the U.S. men's national team. In his interview process, in that panel was Jay Berhalter, a CCO of USSF, of the Federation, Greg Berhalter's brother. In that interview, he named Greg Berhalter as a top candidate for the U.S. men's national coaching job if he were to get the general manager position. So now you have Claudio Reyna and Jay Berhalter that knew of this incident and didn't report it or wouldn't say anything to U.S. soccer, conflict of interest. And what we know about this from the um, investigation is that maybe they wouldn't get in trouble within the Federation, but they could be, or Claudia could be in trouble within FIFA for its code of ethics. There is a statute of limitations for that code of ethics with FIFA, which is five years, so that probably won't be the case. But you should not, that should not be lost upon us. So hopefully it's not just a backlash, but there is some actual change that comes with it. To, to wrap it up, there's another quote that